What's going on, guys? It's Tyler from T-Bone MMA. So it's finally time for UFC 239, and I added a different element. You know, I added that board that will have all my picks on it. Like, I have the fighter, I have the method of finishing, and I have the round. However, it did not turn out as well as I might have hoped. Uh, there's not a whole lot of space to work with on that board. I was able to get all the names on it. However, if you guys aren't able to read it, I'll gladly take it down. Just let me know if you guys aren't able to, uh, to read that. What's up? Um, but nonetheless, if you guys want to follow, I'll have that up and hopefully I'll have that up for the live stream here tonight. If you're not able to read it, don't worry about it. I'll take it down. Just let me know. <laughs> but anyway, UFC 239 that has so many huge wild underdogs that I think the closest odds here tonight are, are Alejandro Perez and Yad Al and Zong and that's even a huge, kind of a, still somewhat of a favorite fight. Yudong, Yudong Song is a minus 220 favorite. Other than that, lots of betting favorites on the card here tonight. So if this is, a, if you're a betting person, this is the, this is the card for you, that's for sure. But anyway, in terms of my predictions, I'm pretty confident with all my picks. I have all these fights greenlighted, to be quite honest with you. I don't have any yellow lights and... Yeah, and considering all the wild underdogs, and there's really not a whole lot of close favorites, to be honest with you here tonight, so it's going to be interesting. But anyway, please let me know what you guys think of that board. Hopefully, you guys will be able to uh, be able to read that. If not, don't worry about it. Anyway, the first fight on the card here tonight is Julia Alvita against uh, Pene Kianzan. Julia Alvita opens up as a minus 200 favorite, the closest uh, betting odds here tonight, and Pene Kianzan, who's a plus 160 underdog. I got this fight going to uh, Vila via unanimous decision based on her only loss was due to an injury. I think it was an ankle injury. And then she's defeated the likes of Marion Renault and Nico Montano. Despite them being early on in her career, it's still impressive victories uh, nonetheless. So I have this fight going to her. She's going to extend. Uh, she lost recently. However, uh, it was via injury. So I think she's going to extend her non-injury winning streak to say the least. The next fight is a very exciting fight on the card here tonight. Ismail Nadurov against Chance Rett Encounter. Ismail Nadurov is a minus 550 favorite against a plus 375 underdog. I'm just like going to Nadurov via unanimous decision based on uh, Nadurov's defeat over Michael Pizarras, who's 26 and 2 going into this fight. He won that fight via unanimous decision. And this. Uh, and despite, uh, with eight straight victories, Michael Pizarro's had eight straight victories going into that fight. Now, despite Nadurov winning the majority of his fights via knockout and submission, I just like going to unanimous decision based on the fact that Chance Rett encounter has not uh, been finished in his mixed martial arts career. The next fight on the card here tonight is, uh, by the way, both those fights are green lights. For future reference, all these fights I'm pretty confident with, so I have the, all these fights green lighted. Next fight on the card here tonight is between Edmund Shabazian and against uh, Jack Marshman. Uh, Shabazian is a minus 600 favorite, and Jack Marshman's a plus 400 underdog. Yet the very, another huge betting favorite here tonight. However, this is the only uh, underdog that I'm going with here tonight. The big underdogs I should I should might add as well. Uh, I have this fight going to Jack Marshman via unanimous decision. Um, based on the people who has finished him in his career, I think this fight will go with the distance. Shabazian has won eight of his uh, nine victories via knockout. I don't see Yadon, or excuse me, I don't see uh, Jack Marshall being finished in this fight, despite him being finished two times in his UFC career. However, both of those were against expert finishers. Antonio Carlos Jr. He lost via submission, and Antonio Carlos Jr. is one of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists in that weight class. Won uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu World Championships several times, so. Him losing via submission is kind of be expected, and he also got knocked out by Tiago Santos, the guy that's now fighting John Jones for the title, and has finished the likes of Jan Blachowicz, uh, Jimmy Manoa, lots of other guys uh, via knockout. So, Edmund Shabazian, despite him being 21 years old, I think there's a huge step up in competition facing against a guy who's got six fights in the UFC. It's going to be uh, pretty tough for him. The next fight, hey, what's up? Um... The next fight is between Alejandro Perez and Yadao and Zong. This is one of the tougher fights that I had to call. However, I'm still pretty confident. Uh, Alejandro Perez opens up as a, as a plus 180 underdog, and Yadao and Zong stands at a two, minus 220 favorite. All these odds, by the way, are based on Forbes.com, so it might fluctuate depending on what kind of uh, media outlet you lose, but this is from Forbes.com. I usually try to use CBS Sports, but they didn't quite update them as much as I would have hoped. 
So the la the latest updates I was able to see was on Forbes. <laughs> Uh, this fight going to Alejandro Perez via unanimous decision based on his last loss against the replacement. Um, Cody Stammen, I think it was. Uh, Yadong Song, he's just more of a stand-up fighter and some interesting history going into this fight. Uh, Alejandro Perez was supposed to face off against Yadong Song at UFC 235. However, Song pulled out of that fight and in step Cody Stammen, who is a Division II uh, wrestling All-American. And completely different styles, and I think that might have thrown him off a little bit. And then eventually, Cody Stammen got a unanimous de uh, decision victory. I see this fight standing up, and Alejandro Perez getting a slight advantage. However, I do have this fight green lighted, but this is one of my le lesser confident picks here tonight. The next fight is between number five and Claudio Gadelia against number four, two ring Honda Marcos. Uh, Claudio Gadelia opens up as a minus 230 favorite, and Honda Marcos is a plus 190 underdog. I was fight going to Claudio Gadelia via round three submission. <laughs> Simply put, I think this is Claudia Cadelia's fight to win. I think she's going to be able to get the fight down to the ground. It's going to be a close fight going into the third round uh, with Claudia Cadelia getting the slight advantage and then eventually finish, finishing the fight in the third round. That's how I see this fight going. Again, a green light. Marlon Vera against no, uh, Nolene Hernandez. Marlon Vera opens up as a minus 420 favorite and uh, Nolene Hernandez plus 320 underdog. As by going to Marlon Vera via round one submission, based on Nolene Hernandez, is a short notice jumping into competition. So, a little bit of history going into this fight again. Uh, Sean O'Malley had to pull out from this card and in stepped another uh, Kate King, the cage fighter. I forget his name off the top of my head. But King of the Cage refused to let him go. So, in steps Nolene Hernandez on just a couple of days' notice, to be quite honest with you. Will Spencer be joining uh, me tonight? No, unfortunately, he's back at home right now. So it's going to be me running the show here tonight. Uh, so based on Nolan Hernandez, he, despite him, he does have a good training ch camp going into this fight. He was, he was scheduled to fight in the LFA later this month. So at least he was on some sort of a fight camp going into this fight. However, jumping into a fighter that has um, UFC experience and, in fact, was on a killer streak at one point. Um, it's going to be tough for him to jump up the competition on this short of notice on International Fight Week. So I have this fight going to Marlon Vera via round one submission. The next fight is between Gilbert Melendez against Arnold Allen. Gilbert Melendez is a plus 265 underdog, and Arnold Allen is a minus two, 340 favorite. I have this fight going to Allen via dominant unanimous decision based on the fact that Arnold Allen is 5-0 and in his UFC career and Gilbert Melendez is 1-5. I can't believe the UFC matchmakers um, put this fight together. Skill-wise, obviously Gilbert Melendez being one of the greatest strike force fighters of all time. However, that was back in like 2011. So again, I'm pretty surprised that the UFC put this fight together, considering how on a good streak Arnold Allen is, and Gilbert Melendez kind of, you know, obviously going one in five in his UFC career, kind of needs a lower level opponent. And Arnold Allen has been looking better than ever. So as if I go into Arnold Allen via dominant unanimous decision. The next fight is the first fight on the main card between the UFC Hall of Famer Diego Nightmare Sanchez against Michael Chiesa. Diego Sanchez, a plus 295 uh, or excuse me, underdog. Michael Chiesa is a minus 370 favorite. Yet again, another huge betting favorite here tonight. I was by going to Michael Chiesa via round two TKO. Again, and, and uh, also Michael Chiesa's first ever TKO victory in his professional mixed martial arts career. He had a couple of knockout wins in his... Uh, in his ultimate fighter career, do you have any upcoming fights, Tyler? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I have uh, another, there's another combatives, Army Combatives Tournament here at Fort Bragg later in August. So I'll get into that a little bit later, but I'm going to try to make 170 for that. So I'm going to be looking more skinny than I do now for for that fight card coming up. I'm, not looking, I'm looking forward to the fight card itself, not leading up to it. And again, Michael Chiesa via round two TKO. I think he'll be able to get his first knockout victory in quite some time. Diego Sanchez, one of the toughest human beings on the planet Earth to finish. However, he's been finished, I believe, three out of his last four losses. Uh, despite him knocking out Mickey Gall in his last fight, I don't see Michael Chiesa, or um, I don't see him knocking out Michael Chiesa. In Michael Chiesa, I don't see him finishing Diego Sanchez. Diego Sanchez is a very underrated ground game, even though we haven't really seen it too much in his UFC career. Um... He's a very high level and very skilled black belt on, black belt on the ground. I don't think Michael Chiesa is... Um, the only way Michael Chiesa, I believe, is going to be able to finish the fight is how he normally does it, or finish via his submission. It's how he normally does it. He drops his opponent and then eventually finishes the fight on the ground, usually via rear naked choke, but he's done all sorts of different things. 
I'm like a key as jumping up a weight class and taking on Carlos Condit in his last fight and getting that beautiful one on Kimura. Um, or it might have been Americana. I, I can't remember. Nonetheless, a very impressive submission over Carlos Condit. It was a black belt of his own, so... You never know. Michael Chiesa might be able to finish this fight on the ground. However, I have it via round two TKO. The next fight is between number four ranked Jorge Masvidal and number five ranked Ben Askren. Jorge Masvidal is a plus 170 underdog and Ben Askren a minus 210 favorite. So, again, one of my more confident picks here tonight, Ben Askren via unanimous decision, is actually one of the closest betting odds here tonight. And, again, kind of surprising Ben Askren, just considering how dominant he has been and how Jorge Masvidal, even though he's done his... He's been, even though he's very, very good on the ground, he's very skilled on the ground. You look at guys like Damian Maya, who's able to control him very much so on the ground. I think Ben Askren is going to take that to another level and get a dominant unanimous decision victory. Again, anything can happen. However, pretty confident with Ben Askren going into this fight. The next fight is the first of the two title fights here tonight. Champion Amanda Nunes opens up as a minus 400 betting favorite against Holly Holm, a plus 300 favorite who knows very well how to be a betting underdog going into fights and can definitely shock the world at any time um and i said it time and time again if holly holmes able to shock the world again i don't even know how i'd react it, 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 this the sport is crazy enough for it to happen however i'm a betting per if i'm a betting person i gotta go with amanda nunez via round two rear naked choke or via unanimous decision i don't see her uh knocking out holly Holm in the first round the way she did against cyborg so I think this fight's going to be a bit of a longer fight with uh, Amanda Nunes getting the slight edge and possibly getting a finish, I think, in the second round via Rina Kachok. Like dropping Holly home and then finishing it on the ground. And the next fight is between the greatest fighters to ever walk the earth, John Bones Jones against Tiago Santos. John Jones obviously is a minus 650 favorite and Tiago Santos a plus 450 underdog. That's like going to John Jones via round three TKL, simply enough. Tiago Santos, yes, he can knock out John Jones, but will he? Probably not, no. So, again, I'm very confident with my picks here tonight. What do you guys think of this board? I have my board here with all the picks on it. It's a little bit out of order, but how I plan on doing it, I'm going to make it a little bit of a game almost. I used to do this way back in the day. In fact, the old UFC uh, 2010 game used to do it. But I'll give myself, I have total points here. I'll give myself one point for the winner and then another point for the, the method of finishing and the round. However, you don't get the two points for the finish and the round if you don't get the fighter right. You need to get the fighter right first. Um, so a maximum of three points per fight. I think it's just going to be something a little bit more fun to, another, another fun element for the fight card here tonight. Because even though I just suck at uh, making picks at fights, I would love to make it a little bit of a game. and Possibly you guys can join along a little bit as well. So, again, just something pretty fun um, I'm looking forward to. And that is it. So, my schedule here for tonight. I'm looking forward to doing a long, producing a lot of content here tonight for it being International Fight Week. So, later tonight I was thinking about, uh, of course, I'll be doing a preview show for the fight card. Um Again, I will have my I'll have it scheduled. So stay tuned on my channel. I'll have it scheduled out so you guys can follow along right out of the gate. And I was also thinking about I have all my fights uh, for the last tournament. I was thinking about reviewing them if I'm able to, like have it up on the screen so you guys can watch it and me like in the corner of the screen reviewing it. If you guys would be interested, something that I kind of want to do for myself just to kind of review the fights on my own. Santos wins via round two TKO. That's a bold prediction there, Cotton. But again, it's it's a possibility. The sport is crazy enough that it might happen. However, man, it's, it's always tough to bet against a guy like John Jones. He proves time and time again that he's one of the best on the planet Earth. So, yeah, stay tuned uh, all day today. I'm going to be here, so it's going to be pretty fun. So, tuning in from Lake Ponset, what's up? But anyway, you tuned in a little too late. I'm about to close down the show. But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys later tonight. I'll have a preview show out. Uh, for sure later today. So it's going to be a very exciting night. So this is Tyler Burton, T and I'm Mate, and I'll see you guys.